And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, for the third time is the charm, <laughs> the most cursed man I've ever, I've ever had here in the hallowed halls of the temple, the man with the gift of gab, the gift of jab, and the gift of metal, not necessarily in that order, creator of Elpharis, and slain back from hell, the one and only Andrew Gilmore. How are you doing tonight, man? Well, hello again. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> for the third time now. <laughs> yeah, and hopeful, and this is where I'm knocking on wood, because the last two times I brought you in, um... Something ended up getting screwed up. Either, either they only heard half of the show, they only heard they only heard you, or they didn't hear anybody. Right. Well, but we could hear each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, already we're making improvements. So far, I got a few beers going. So. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the what's the drink of the night? Well, like I said, I live in the middle of like nowhere, so I'm just drinking cause light. <laughs> I'll let it I'll let it slide. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but that's what I'm doing. Look, when times are hard, even the devil eats flies. Oh, good one. Um. Now we've talked. We've mentioned this a couple of times, but you would, but you're, um, I think you had mentioned in the past that your introduction to to um, gaming had largely an arcade bent. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I would say entirely. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a, I had a ZX eighty one, and I would code on that for a bit. But mm -hmm. that time going to the um, the carnival that will come round. <laughs> this sounds like so Harry Potter shit. Like the carnival that will come round town, and we'd like go to the, where go on the common and go down there and like um, ride the rides there. This one time I went down there and it's Space Invaders machine, and that was just like mind blowing. So like, how can you concentrate on this? It's way too complex. <laughs> and that was like, so yeah, going back home and starting to make uh, those games as well. On my ZX81. Or like reading them in from magazines, predominantly. Yep. Spending days typing them in. Mm -hmm. With that weird, uh, like, keyboard you have to like, hold down to like, uh, type words in. <laughs> I, still, yeah. I still can't type either. Um, but it, is, it one of those case, is it one of those cases where you can type, you just can't do home row? I can do what I need to do. <laughs> I think that answers that. <laughs> like anybody who like uh, you know, who talks to me on um, like Discord or in chat, I'm just thinking I'm like 14 years old because I just like sit back and I like, type and just see what comes out and I look at it. And I know it's wrong. I still just hit enter. Mm -hmm. So, not a good combination when using Twitter, of course. No. Um... I'm um, get um guess I'm guessing if you had to go through one of those words for a minute tests, you'd probably fail it. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> to be quite honest, the only time I could see myself doing a, doing those kind of tests or practicing my words per minute is if I, is if I was applying to be a stenographer, and I hate courtrooms, so that's pretty much out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Who does like them? Or uh, I guess a lot of people do that. Well, I would but, I would say lawyers, but um, I should I should have said who in the I should have said who in the right mind would like to be in a courtroom. Lawyers, there you go. You're right. Emphasis on right mind here. Not even the judges want to be there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, the judge, no, the judge is like, look, just get, look, just get this over with, so we can all get drunk and pre and pretend nothing happened here. Um. But 
when it came, um, I always, I always find it, I always find it interesting when, so, when games come around that um, are try, that are very clearly wearing their influences on their sleeve, and in your case, well, a big one of that is heavy metal. Now, we've talked about the music end of things in in the past, but there's a part of me, if, and maybe I'd asked this in in a, in a um, previous chat, but. There's a part of me that's curious if you had ever read the Heavy Metal magazine in the past. Um, I, I knew about it, but no, I hadn't really uh, um, read it at all. I see it lying around, picked mm -hmm. it up. I was more into, like back then, uh, like Dragon and like White Dwarf, mm -hmm. I guess. Like White Dwarf primarily. Yeah. Which I can, def I can definitely see White Dwarf... Um, Get, it was always the, just good. Heavy metal was just always a bit too sexy for me. <laughs> um, like it, most of the time, a lot of kind of cheesecake and pin up and all that kind of stuff, which would, is cool. Would now, you looking. be Would you be surprised if I said that the that heavy metal magazine originally came from France? No, I mean I, I've spoken to the guys uh, from Heavy Metal magazine, like uh, actually before doing this about you know. Um, doing something with them in the future and you know i, I hope that happens at some point mm -hmm. they de they definitely seem like pr like pretty um pretty chill pretty chill folks and and hey if you end up doing it it'll, it'll mean that you um were able to get yourself featured in the same magazine that was heavily featuring mobius so that's a feather to put in the old cap yeah he's one of the greats for sure mm -hmm. yeah i'm not sure if it's something that like uh, i want to do at this stage in my career. <laughs> yeah. Um, fair and fair enough. Now it's more fun just doing what I want than having to, you know, stick it stick within these parameters at the moment. So no, I'm I'll just no, I'll just make anything up and put it into a game. Yeah. And make it work. <laughs> now when it came now when it came to when it came to slain, like I I know that the first time I had you on you had mentioned that the big inspiration for that was um, Ghosts and Goblins. Um, yeah, true. But one one of the things that I, one of the things that I was cur was curious about was even even how many if you were if you were to do a if you were to do a um, run with Ghosts and Goblins, how high, how high would the um, death drinking game get? Are we talking alcohol poisoning levels of high? Yeah, for sure. Even now, I reckon I'll be pretty good at both the drinking and the playing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can I can handle my fair share of hard games, but Ghosts and Goblins always trips me up, and I know exactly why. It's not necessarily the difficulty; it's the jumping. I tried to I tried to put some of the jump mechanics from Ghosts and Goblins mm -hmm. into um, into Slay, but we had to take them out because they were just like way too difficult, like precise pixel jumps, like ones that are um, like capped apex, mm -hmm. so you can only jump to like a uh, you know like halfway up and then like you get like dropped down, so you don't get a full jump and shit like that. Yeah, but they would no, but yeah, they ended up coming out of the game. People just people just won't deal with that shit now, I guess. Um. It's one of those things that you could get that you could get away with in in the NES era because uh, because of why Nintendo hard was a thing, but it's I'd say it's not something you could get away with um, nowadays. Um, but when it when it came to that whole blood soaked look look of it, um, I'm curious what so, what sort of albums you were, what sort of metal albums you were drawing from for that particular style. I mean. Wow, I mean, during like uh, the creation of Slain, I guess primarily I was listening to a lot of uh, a lot of Doom. So um, my Dying Bride, mm -hmm. November's Doom, like obviously Candle Mask, Doom yep. versus Ahab, like all these like slow, low, and just like trudging like games. Like, I kind of wanted Slain to feel that way. Yeah, like um, and then you know. More into the gothic theater tragedy and like uh, like all all of that uh, 
bands as well. Mm-hmm. So I was quite I was quite gothic making Slayer. Yeah, and uh, probably like um, my Dying Bride was primarily primarily the when I was listening to the most. In fact, there's still a secret in Slaying called uh, To Remain Tombless that comes from uh, my Dying Bride. Mm-hmm. But the um, one of the one of the th- one of the things that I saw as a um, as a con- as kind of a connective tissue between <clears throat> both Slain and Valfaris is the notion of having a parry system and getting rewarded for timing. Um, what was the inspiration to do to do that kind of thing? Was that something that you had decided on early on, or did it kind of luck its way into the system? <clears throat> And um, well, the, the first time it came out, um, when it was just Slay, it, it wasn't even in there. And then when it got remade for, from Slay and Back to Hell, mm-hmm. we kind of like had time to put all of these uh, thought um, processes into it. So parry and like is you know something that's pretty cool to do, and you kind of mm-hmm. want to do it if you've got a sword, <laughs> which should be part of your repertoire at least. Yeah. So yeah, we checked it out, and it will continue into um, the game that I'm making now, which has like. A more intriguing parry system, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we want to like, a, like in slaying and Valfaris, we want to keep the player moving forwards and fighting like all the time. And uh, like parrying was just a like part of helping you like pause for a bit and take advantage. Mm-hmm. And yeah. They like carrying in the back of the screen, pushing it forward like two pixels at a time. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I'm also curious about is because when when I look at when I when I when I when I look at so, when I look at some of the des, some of the early designs, I have I have to wonder if um, Elric of Milnibene was an influence as well. Uh, like Warcock. Yeah. Um. Yeah, um, in, incidentally, I would say, but yeah, definitely, the imagery from the covers of those books, and from Mike Hawkwind, um, and Michael Moorcock had in those stories, definitely, mm-hmm. but not directly. Yeah, I can I can see it. I, that's some that's something I can de- that's something I can definitely um see, um. The other, th- the other thing is the whole, the whole notion of um, elements with with um, with the sword. Um, was was that just was that just um, something you had considered to um, sp- to help spice up encounters? Um, well, later on, like yeah, definitely, it was more of like a Metroid kind of rock paper scissors thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just get, like, three elements out there and, like, pair them off against each other. Or use them to open doorways, or use them to an advantage. But originally, the game was meant to be, I want to, like, say, to be, like, ghosts and goblins Mm -hmm. until you get to the top fights. They kind of, like, changed into a more of a street fighter, like, high-low, power, like, weak attack, weak attack, Mm -hmm. attack and doing all that kind of stuff to get through it. But that never really, like, made it into the game. And we're gonna keep trying to do that. <laughs> was it a was it a case of it just being too hard to program effectively two games at once? Yeah, I mean that's the you know that's the kick in the balls for any game developer. Like if you're trying to like do two games at once, it's like just like it. Yeah, um, but just one and just doing good. Like the whenever when whenever the programming thing comes up, I al- I always end up thinking of a bit of a bit of a programming meme that. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's gotten tossed around the office. You know, ninety nine lit till bugs in the code. Ninety nine lit till bugs. Take one down. Patch it around. One hundred lit till bugs in the code. Right. <laughs> oh. Indeed. Sim- simply because a lot of people I've who I've talked with who've worked in pro- who worked in programming in one form or another tells you that a finished program is just put together with spit and prayer. Yeah, I mean, kind of like anything, really. Mm-hmm. If you're working towards a goal, if it's all like perfectly constructed along the way, you're probably not going to finish it. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. Um, if every and... step 
has to be perfect. Yeah, and whenever, whenever, whenever the talk of perfection always comes up, I always think of um, the film Heaven's Gate, and how Ooh. behind the scenes that was an absolute nightmare, because the director wanted to try and make the most perfect film he could, and some of the things he was asking people to do in the process of that were absolutely insane. And then the whole thing got chopped up because MGM had to be an idiot. Yeah, the, because there isn't anything of perfection. Yeah. It's just like, it just doesn't exist. No. Um, There's a really cool saying about it that, um, that I quote all the time, but I can't remember right now. <laughs> if you want to look in like... Um, I'll tweet it later. I'll tweet it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember it now, which I'm quite ashamed of. Yeah. Um, although, although one th one thing that I, one thing that I will I will admit I ended up um, I ended up laughing at when it came when it came to Slain is is the whole thing with the talisman. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. You know you've. The, um, that was totally based on a uh, an old ZX Spectrum game called Saber Wolf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, yes, yeah, we'll just collect four parts of Talisman. This would be also be reminding of like Saber Wolf. Yeah, because the thing that, the thing is that at the time when I when I started to see the Talisman pieces, I was I was thinking this is going to be an important this is going to be important for something, but I have no idea what. And then I get and then I get to Vrall and. Um, <laughs> It turns, it turns the second part of that into a cakewalk. Um, yeah, I mean, I think those kind of things are fun throughout the game, like mm -hmm. being too something mega at the end because you worked really hard during the game. We yeah. found all these things is good, or you can just put it as a normal person and not explore the game all the way through. Yeah. Now. When it comes when it comes to since you mentioned since you mentioned ghosts and goblins as as a major inspiration, I'm curious if you if in some of the early designs you had thought about doing um, ghosts and goblins style po style power up weapons. Yeah, was that just one of those things that you just couldn't get it to um, work right? Um. I think we just wanted to like advance the the gameplay as well, and like having learned, you know, some of these older mechanics aren't aren't going to really like uh, cut it in today's like market. Mm -hmm. So it's like ugh. so let's not use those and let's just push the ones that we have, like, and we know they're good and people like, and we like primarily. Yeah. Uh, just push those to be like better. Can we do that? <laughs> Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Even if any would disagree with that. I mean, the games that we we make are you know doing these kind of like nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties. Now we're kind of into two thousands with um with the next Battle Forest in Scotland. Um, we're trying to like take all the games from those time periods and just push their graphics and their gameplay, not just using the old school, using the old gameplay. Yeah. And when it comes when it comes to when it come now when it comes to when it comes to um just sl just slain as a whole as a whole um like a after after back from hell had finished and the and the whole insanity that ha that happened with um with the original slain and then tr and then trying again with back from hell, um, what were what would you say were some of the big takeaways or some of the harsher lessons that you ended up getting from it? Well, I got a pretty good uh, lesson uh, about uh, business, how money works, <laughs> like up front. Um, I guess the thing that I learned the most is. Get yourself good lawyers and get yourself a good publisher, because those are the guys that are going to end up protecting you to be able to do your job again. Mm -hmm. Even though I think a lot of indie devs don't, uh, I think they're out there on their own. But these guys are there, kind of, you know, 
guide you through so you can like get up every day and just focus on getting the work done. You don't have to worry about what Nintendo's doing or who's fighting who or what's going on. If there's a problem, they'll solve it. Yeah. So now I have those on my team and it's like way easier making it for sure. And when it comes, um, when it comes to the, when it come when it comes to the, um, the whole, the whole twist at the, at the end of Slain, that the, um, per, that, um, ba- that of course, ba- of course, Batherin is the, is the sword itself, not the, per- not the person who's wielding it. Um, was, was that, was that something you had, was that something that, um, was settled on early in development? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's how I wanted it to be, like I say, it's like a story about a sword and all these different wielders, Mm -hmm. even though technically in Slain, the wielder is just called Guardian. He doesn't really have a name, but people do still refer to him as (laughs) Batman, which is quite funny. Um, but understandable because of like having a character you can't attach a name to is kind of a bit like off kilter as well, I guess. Mm-hmm. And he I didn't w- really make that much of an appearance in Valparis, but he's going to make a better appearance as Batherin the sword in a um, Valparis mecha. Yeah. And. Speaking speaking of that, that brings me to Valfaris, and I had, when I had first found out about Valfaris and ta- and talked about it during a um during an E three stream that I di- that I did a, a couple of years ago, um I had jokingly called it heavy metal contra, which is saying something because when when you look at the when you look at the monster design in Contra, um it's hard to it would it would have been you would have been hard pressed to get more metal than that back in the day. It is a pretty good job, yeah. if not one of the best. <laughs> um, hang on a sec. Yeah, I guess like the thing about metal mm. and and the games that I make, I, I don't really like. I never really set out to make metal video games. I just like wanted to make like arcade video games, like we were talking about before, like Ghost and Goblins, ones that are, like challenging. And like uh, make you put down the controller, calm yourself, walk away for a little bit, come back three days later and just destroy shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but because when I play those games, I'm probably listening to metal in the background. I wanted that to be like the soundtrack for it. So it just all came together and it's like uh, with the artwork, and everybody says, oh yeah, this is like all really metal now. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess so. It's not like a... It's not contrived though. I'm not like fucking forcing it all into position. It's just what happened. Mm-hmm. And what I what I per, what I personally found interesting when it came when it came to um Valfar, when it came to Valfaris is being it being able to do that while still allow while still allowing for some degree of melee and moreover making melee very important like there is ki- there is kind of a da- was there is kind of a dance going on with between needing to needing to stay in range so you don't die but also needing to get cl- get close so you can actually recover energy right uh, well um like before we like to reward the player for aggressiveness and like mm-hmm. uh, moving forwards and getting into a situation and pushing it as far as possible, mm-hmm. like uh, like old school Diablo, like Diablo two, even Diablo three does a pretty good job of like heating up everything and getting you into a position where you're like overwhelmingly powerful and then just hitting you with something that crushes you, and just sits you on your ass for a second to go like, hmm, right? It's a really think think that strategy, but during the during the build up to it, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um But Diablo is like a huge influence as well. Mm-hmm. Um and when it came, where did the um 
like when it's funny you meant it's funny you mentioned something like Diablo, and in in that regard, where was in some of the early designs, was there going to be a bit more of a Diablo influence with the equipment setup? Um, no. We didn't really want to do it like a heavy in inventory system and mm -hmm. definitely not like any crafting systems. We just wanted to keep it like as like um, a core action experience. Um, during Balfaris, we, we pushed in a little bit more leveling up so you can level up your weapons so you can become more powerful if you like explore a little bit more, or, mm -hmm. you know, do a few more things like within the game. Which make which um definitely which makes sense. Um, but yeah, we wanted to just keep it down to you know because I can play crafting games and I can play all the other games if I want to. I just like I wanted to make a game that was just filling this niche part for me that wasn't a. Uh, wasn't being filled now it's just like turn on crush for a little bit and turn it off <laughs> yeah but with Valfaris, was it a case of what was it a case early on where you were you had said okay I've, okay i've done fantasy let's do science fiction this time well no because they're the same thing to me what do you but mean by that it all takes place in the same universe. Mm -hmm. There's just uh, science fiction. One's called magic, and the other one's called science fiction. Mm -hmm. One's using weapon projectiles. The other one's using like magic projectiles. And they, they will all combine in the end into well, um, Belfarus Mecha. Now is like a mm -hmm. combining a lot. I mean, you're fighting. You're fighting with mechs in like graveyards. It's like I'm playing Dark Souls, more like a now or Diablo as a mech, what's going on? <laughs> and when it kept, and of course of course what's um one of the things that really that really stood out to me with um with with Valfaris was a lot of the um a lot of the environments like in, instead of going instead of going um gothic like what we like what happened with slain you were going a lot more i guess i'll say weird <laughs> yeah just doing like a little bit more abstract mm -hmm. maybe like this one's like uh, create a bunch of like cool shapes mm -hmm. in the background and, you know give them cool textures and give them cool purposes you know much like um you know painting yeah or like oil painting or create painting or something so it's kind of fun just messing around with uh just like what is this made of attitude because everything's made of metal like wood plastic or concrete mm -hmm. glass like all these things are fine but um you know it does take you know a lot of training to like uh um, not make your metal look like plastic when you're when you're coming up and training and doing like building materials and things mm -hmm. But it's fun, but like, once you know how to do that, I like, just mess them up. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one's this one's metal wood. This is a tree made of metal. Yeah. Um. Oh, when it came when it came to the inclusion of the mech parts in Valfaris, was that just the case of, um, hey, I I, I want to put I want to put a mech in the game, so we're putting a mech in the game. Yeah, we felt it was like a, about right that we needed to like uh, ride around the level in a mech and just like destroy stuff. So mm -hmm. we put it in, like just based on the <laughs> of what what we wanted to do there. And given like once again, it was kind of a reward again. It's like, well done, you've worked really hard. You've got to this place. Like you know, maybe most people wouldn't have got to this place, but now here you go, wreak havoc. In this mm -hmm. mech, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be it's not going to be a cakewalk, but yeah, it will be fun. Also, I'm um, there's a part of me that's always been curious, that's always had a um curiosity with how, with what was the idea, with how you handle checkpoint systems within Valfaris and Slain, where the the items that you get for it um. Like especially in Valfaris, are gonna are gonna upgrade your health, but you spend them when um you when doing when doing checkpoints. Yeah, that was a 
like Thomas's idea, the guy that I, the programmer I work with. Mm -hmm. um, that was his idea of like um, a better like risk reward system, basically. I kind of disagreed with it a bit in the end, in the beginning, I should say. But uh, we kind of got it in there and it worked out pretty good. And it rewarded mm -hmm. uh, the good players, made them stronger. Plus it plus it allow it allows for some ego stroking when when you when somebody puts up that they did a no death run. Some of those guys are just killing it. They so the speedrunners are doing like Balfaris in like forty five minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that's the kind of a uh, you know thing that you know it Balfaris and Seda both set out there as like a real you know, as a as a challenge, as a scenario, but with DMs with giving you the shit to play. Yeah. How well he is. Um I do have to say that speed speed running can be equal parts amazing and demoralizing depending on the game. I think the only thing more demoralizing is watching pro tech watching pro Tetris players. <laughs> no bowling. Okay, that too. <laughs> bowling is like Oh my god, you missed that one by like a... Uh, oh, you missed it by 1%? Okay, you lose. Everybody else hit it dead on. <laughs> Speaking from experience there? No, no. I, yeah, I rarely bowl. I've seen it on television and watching it. I'm just like, well, this is like, not who is the best. It's like, who's going to fuck up? <laughs> well, that's not inaccurate. But when it comes, um, it's in it's interesting you you mention you mention a a more a more aggress a more aggressive play style with it within um, Valfaris, um, because some something that I f something that I find a bit a bit amusing is the fact that with with all the with all the nods to Contra, um, there are certain there are. There are certain there are certain guns within Contra that don't make that don't quite make the one to one transition, for um some for the better because you don't have anything like the laser from Super C. Then again, why the hell would you take that? Um, See, I, I only played um I only played one version of Contra, and I played it in Italy somewhere, in a um when my parents took me over there <laughs> for a holiday, I spent two weeks playing it. It was called Grazel. That's the only one I've played. Ah, <laughs> I think I'm trying to remember if that if that was the alternate version of I think that was an alternate version of the original because it because it was that it was it was that era where there were where certain games had to be retitled for dumb reasons. Yeah, what, what the hell was going on there? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was in Italy. I've seen I've seen that kind of situation happen in the US and the UK where certain games got retitled. Yeah, um, I mean it happens all the time. Yeah. I mean I, I just did Grazor Grazor is Contra. But mm -hmm. that's the only one I played played. And I played it through like I spent all my money, all my hard earned pocket money fucking getting through that machine. Yeah. Oh. It was fun. But I remember, I remember somebody. I remember somebody joking about about um, some version of the spread gun. Which um, I mean, there there's there's certainly weapons that have a wide arc, but I wouldn't say any. I wouldn't even say the shotgun is the equivalent to the spread gun, since that was the power up everybody wanted to. Everybody wanted to get. And yeah, we, so we modernized and we dropped all the power ups. Mm -hmm. Once again, and like uh, put them all into a system you could control a little bit better, I guess. Yep. Of but course. I like to... Of course, with some of with some of them, you just decide to go straight straight up nuts when it came to the type of ammo that they use. I don't remember any of that. You've obviously played it way better than me. <laughs> That's why it took me two weeks to get through it. I guess. <laughs> Um, the Contra was one of the um, like inspirations, but obviously Turrican was like a big one as well. Yeah, 
I have I have heard a lot I have heard a lot of recommendations about Turrican. Unfortunately, that that was a game that had much more of a foothold in the UK than did in the than it did in the States. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's my background. I was like the European of bringing in game development, so mm-hmm. I didn't really get into consoles at all. Like, uh, I mean, the first console I ever owned was a, a PlayStation Two, I think. I uh, worked on the war up until that point as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm get I'm um. Um, guess I'm guessing that gr- that um instead instead of instead of co- instead of um consoles, a lot of it w- a lot of it in your case was um was fo- was focused more on um PC yeah, and PC was, engine stuff. Yeah, you know, it's personal computers. So mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, Ataris. Like I, I went through the Atari Atari ST, well Spectrum prior to that, ZX eighty one, uh, ZX Spectrum, then the one two A's, then jump into Atari five twelve, ten twenty four, like on to the PCs. Yeah. From that point. Um and, yeah. <laughs> anything <laughs> a, anything when it came to the uh, Commodore? Um I didn't uh, Use the Vic Twenty or the Commodore Sixty Four. Those mm-hmm. are kind of the, the rival gang ones, right? <laughs> but I have Thanks. worked on them. You know, they were like a, how the Amiga, the Atari ST stood off as well. Oh, when you say rival gang, that put that only puts in my head of of um, of game developers' versions of the Bloods and Crips. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of South Park when they're doing like Game of Thrones, but mm-hmm. <laughs> over the Xbox and the PS. Mm-hmm. Which, um, okay. it was always like, yeah, your computer is shit. No, your computer is shit. All right, do you want to play games on this one? Yeah, fine. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they all make games. Yeah, and the, um, the other, th- the other thing I'm, one of the things, I, one of the things I was curious about is with, um now when it came to up when it came to upgrading um we- when it came to upgrading melee and ranged weapons in um Felfaris, you've you've got you've um you've got the you've got metal and then you've got blood of Vel- of Valfaris. Um were there so, were were there was that the um upgrade system that you guys had intent intended from early on, or was that one that was Kind of settled into after ones that didn't quite work out. Um, no, that's the first one that we went for because uh, we were both playing a uh, um, Bloodborne pretty heavy at the time. Mm-hmm. Which I can, I can, um, I can definitely see. I can definitely see that. Um, and actually, I, ha- I have. To, I I will admit, I tell I tell a lie. There is one firearm that's the equivalent to the spread gun. And that's the plasma pistol. Oh yeah, you got a three-way shot on that. Yeah. Um. Which is probably is probably why that was probably why that gun ended up being a mainstay as opposed to something like Therian's call, which is certain is certainly nice to have a big fuck off beam, but um. Right. I I live and die off for whenever I'm whenever I'm doing any sort of twin stick shooter I live and die off of rate of fire. Yeah. Like just being well, able to dispense the most amount of daca because well if you fire enough bullets you'll eventually hit something. Yeah, with I think there you know there should be like avenues for both of those approaches. Mm-hmm. People that like that and People that uh, you know, they, most of the time I'm, I like playing um, two-handed weapons, heavy hitter. Get in there, do all your damage up front, and get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> no matter like what it is, whether it's like, um, playing all Korean World of Warcraft or playing like a Blood Bowl or whatever, or Dark Souls. I, th- I think I can guess which weapons you you end up fa- you ended up favoring if you were playing Doom at any point. I haven't played any of the new ones. I haven't played 2016 or uh, 
Eternal. Mm -hmm. But I'm guessing you had played the. I'm guessing you had played the um, first two. I actually like the Doom. Uh, the one before that that had when normal maps were all new. There was like you know four people working in software. Yeah. I, um, that was like had a good suspense to Doom. It yeah. felt like claustrophobic of like walking around and like just seeing stuff. Oh, it was like scary. That's how I thought the original ones were. Mm -hmm. um, I think the best story out of it, out of it that, I've, that I ever heard was was when um, <laughs> when Carmax when Carmax suggested tearing the walls down walls down so that so that it'd be easier to keep an eye on everybody. So they did. <laughs> like just 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 smash the just smash the wall between two offices. Yeah. I can't say that I haven't done that myself in studios before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe it all came from software. Yeah. Now, last time, last time we attempted this, you had mentioned oh. that you were that there was a um, third project that you were working on that was going to be aiming a little more to, a little more towards um, a rail shooter. Did I? Tell me about it. Well, that <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was the that was the description you gave me at the at the time that you were going you it was going to be focused more on um, controlling the wolf ship itself. Right. This is the game I'm working on now, but it's uh, this is what it's formed into now. Mm -hmm. Like it, we started doing the wolf ship and making it one of our types. So you're flying around in a spaceship. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you're doing a bunch of R typey stuff, but I found that I really wanted to animate stuff, so we just replaced it with a mech. <laughs> so now mm -hmm. uh, this is what we're working on now, and the mech is like so much better. The things we can do with it, like you say, we can still do the parrying. We still got all the weapons from Valfaris like attached to it, so mm -hmm. you can still fire them just at mech size. You still got little bitty kind of uh, guys running around the ground that you can just like stomp on and stuff. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Got bombs on. Them. <laughs> just as you will. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> like I'm, I'm looking at some, um, when I look at some of the footage of of that one. Um, now. I will ask the obvious question: the whole the whole resurrection idol that we that we that was in pre, that was in previous games is that particular motif still going to be in this third project? Um, there'll be something similar to it, but mm -hmm. it won't be exactly the same. Um, and I'm get I'm guessing there's still going to be the relationship between um between health and energy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they they both will feed off each other mm -hmm. and be rewarded for aggression. Yeah. Espe especially, and hey, and hey, you're get, you'll be doing something that we don't that we don't see often with um with ra with rail shooters, and that and that I'm, I think it's safe to assume that melee weapons are still going to be a factor. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it ma is it mainly a is the main benefit a um easy way to get energy? Yeah, I mean it's still working on the same system like Balfour. It's not going to mm -hmm. like uh, swap, swap everything up so nobody knows what they're doing in the new game. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you're still going to be swinging your sword. You're still going to have like a destroyer, destroyer like a now like forms two functions. It can still do like a pistol, mm -hmm. right? Like with multiple taps and things, then you can hold it down and like charge up more of a destroyer kind of a weapon, as you would in a good uh, shooting up. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Then we got melee, which is yeah, you know, for taking down the soft things that are closing in close to you as you get swarmed and stuff. Uh, I mean, it's still because it's a, a shooting up. You've only got one direction of uh, fire now. 
not no more eight ways and so position it is a force in the game yeah I suppose if somebody wanted to be pedantic about it they could in theory do eight do eight way but um it wouldn't it wouldn't really be practical the controls would yeah hard to do it like the the only way I could the only way I could see it is doing literal twin stick, you know, like um, Smash TV or that kind of style. Yeah, this game was almost Smash TV. It's almost been a few things. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that I'm guessing because because on the um, footage that's shown, there's that there's that green circle that says 100. percent I'm guessing that's for the um, equivalent to the bomb. That you'd see in that you'd see in some rail shooters. Uh, that's actually for yeah. I need to fix that. That's actually for um, your dash, so you can like uh, rush forwards and mm -hmm. shield. Ah. And now the deplete as you hit stuff. Um, but it it will be part of a um, an attack cycle. Yeah. Like later on. Um. Like with with a lot of because I played a lot of rail I played a lot of rail shooters. I play. There is not there is not a single version of Raiden that I haven't played. Um, same same with same with R Type and Gradius. And one thing that one thing that I'm one thing that I'm curious about is um, in a lot of those cases you do have you do have some sort of um, power up that is the bomb. You know you hit you it's basically your panic button. Yeah, we have that as well. I mean, it's a it's the third option where we have three options. Mm -hmm. So destroyer, which kind of like switches between tap and power. Yep. So you can like tap and power is. And we have your melee, which is like the recharger and the crushing of the small fleshy things. Mm -hmm. Then you have um, your third, which is your missiles. So you have homing missiles that you can like hold down here, like a um, click anything in a range and launch out missiles to it. You have napalm you can drop. And uh, this is taking them. We wanted it to be like Scramble, the older Scramble game, where you're like blowing up fuel depots with like mm -hmm. bombs <laughs> as you're going over it and stuff like that. So yeah. the bomb is still there, and we have one that is a smart bomb as well. So clear screen, basically. Yeah, I can, I can get, I can get behind that. Um, is look, some sometimes there's just too much on the screen, and you need to do some cleanup. <laughs> But that's why you have those small bombs. Yeah. Um, Once again, back to Defender mm -hmm. and Scramble, which yeah. I don't, did Scramble. I don't know. Defender definitely had small bombs. Yeah. Um. Now in Valfaris, you had that whole setup with um, with diff with three different um equipment slots: one for melee, one for ranged, and one for power weapons. Um, are you going to have a somewhat similar approach to? Um, equipment slots. Yeah, same thing. It's going to be um, your assault, your uh, destroyer, which is mm -hmm. one two hands, and your back, which is your uh, bombs and uh, weapons. Yeah. But also after defeating um, some of the mech brothers, like a, uh, I'll talk about the story in a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they will drop uh, shoulder pads and helmets for you that you can equip. They will do like a like utility kind of um, functions, I guess. Yeah. Like boost your, you know, boost your swing speed or have more health or you know, basically mm -hmm. gain variables set to those shoulders, head drops. Yeah. I can de I can definitely get I can definitely get behind something like that. Um, a little Diablo. Yeah, yeah. Now, when it com when it comes to um, story, um, now in the last w in the last one you had the ho you had the whole the f the final days of Valfaris as as um the guy as the guy who was running the place. Which wasn't Vral because he had fled a long time ago. Um, was trying to, was trying to throw Valfaris into into a nearby star, and that and then of course you ended up flying off to to continue the pursuit of Vral. Um, is the, is this third project picking up right where that story left off? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll be like uh, flying away from the the fortress style forest as it mm -hmm. like uh, dips into Sol Moray, the snow. Yeah. And uh, it will start again. Look at the life size of Ro. <clears throat> but this mm -hmm. time, you might find it. Yeah. Um, wh which, when it comes now, obvious, obviously you, obviously you were in po you were in power armor in in um Valfaris, but um, what's the in story reason for go for going with a full mech? Like, did he just have did he just have a mech within the wolf ship? Yeah, there will be story explaining mm -hmm. that on the way and basically it's like that so they picked it up along the way between the games and now it's in the it's stored in the ship mm -hmm. kind of a bit like Warframe so you like a you know drop out of your ship yeah so it's, it's kind of more like a Warframe like not really mech it's not like 64 maybe like a more like a loader from Aliens um, a, big, a bigger load of them yeah, that I'd say I'd say that leans more towards power armor than um, a mech. Right, but this is a good question: Does he have power armor on inside the power armor mech? The it... answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you fishing for an Inception joke there? Because <laughs> I could have no, swore that's what you were trying to pull. No, I got it. Right, but yeah, so he, he'll find this like mech armor mm -hmm. and they'll use that. Like, Case will still be up there, like, guiding you through. Like, Batherin mm -hmm. is now part of you as well because you have that weapon because you yeah. just picked it up in the last game. Yeah. So it's going to be um, a melding of all these arcs into the end. But it won't be the end because I've still got eight more games to make. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just give the end in the way? Shit. <laughs> you better you better not jinx yourself and 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 suffer the shem you curse for the next twenty years or something like that. So, in lo in lieu of not tempting the gods of irony, but have um. I know. Should, I know. Up to this point, I've been referring to it as just, as just the third as just the third game or game number three or what have you. But um, have you settled on a title for this project, or is that still in the works? Well, the movie is called a uh, Valtharis Mechatherian, but I'm sure that will get like uh, dewed down mm -hmm. or improved into something better. Yeah. Um, or oh, make say that now. When Volfaris came around, its its um, first playable introduction f for me was the demo version. Are you going to be taking a similar route with th with this, where it, after a bit of time you're going to put out a um, like a one level demo, and that and then one and then once the final game is ready, put that out. Uh, yeah, I kind of like doing that. It's kind of a, a bit old school, just getting the demo out there. Mm -hmm. From a development standpoint, it allows you to like just do a little work, uh, immediate cross section of like how it's all going to work. Yeah. Um, Even though it, it does uh, sidetrack development into another uh, branch, basically, because you, uh, now you're making this demo. Mm -hmm. By the time the game comes out, that demo is going to be redundant anyway at that level, <laughs> how it worked before. Yeah. When it. Uh, um... Are you shoot? Are you shooting to have that to have that particular demo out? I don't know, mid midway through next year. Yeah, some sometime around there would be good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it'd be it'd be a nice thing. For, it'd be a nice way for people to escape the blistering heat um, during the summer, or right. blist or blistering cold for our for our guys on the bottom end of the planet. Who knows what we're getting? It's not thanks mm -hmm. anything right now. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, of course, of co of course, and and everything can go topsy turvy er in um, in a moment in a moment's notice, as you do. 
So I just like push on making video games, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that, well, that and at, well, that and adding to every, adding to everybody's blood alcohol content with the death drinking game. <laughs> you die in the game. You take a shot. See, um, saying was a re- I went to like um, bring about kind of one of those games and that far. It's more of a couch kind of shooter. Mm-hmm. So you all sit together. Uh, you pass the controller around. You just come back from the pub. You can like call each other names and everything, but there's always like a, when you get like people playing it like that, there's always one person that can do something really good. So you can't beat it. Then he's just like sitting and like beats it. So progressing the game that way. Mm-hmm. So that's why the kind of fights like change a lot in a Battle Forest and Slay. So yeah. always to uh, um, make everybody's style good at some point. <laughs> yeah, and there's def- there. I know some people say that there isn't a, there isn't a market for that style when everybody's playing online, but I don't agree because that pretty much sums up the um the st- the style the style gameplay scene with um the Devil May Cry series and how pe- how people would um try would try and post videos of do of doing the most stylish combos that they could. Like I think even I did. I think even even I chipped in on that at least one point in my early days. Great game though. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's accounts like like Crazy on um, Twitter that catalog a lot of those clips. Plus, um, some plus somebody can dig around on YouTube just typing in Combo Mad, and you'll find some interesting stuff. Yeah, but, but those are the reasons, you know. We make the video games mm-hmm. to challenge people. It's not like pass time by and waste your time and then try and get more money from you. <laughs> well, I guess a lot of it is now, but definitely not a drive here. It's like challenge, worst DM ever. I want to keep all my treasure. <laughs> yeah, when it com- when it comes to when it comes to that kind of thing, I think. I think that anybody who go- I th- I honestly think that anybody who goes with the whole oh it, oh it's all, oh it's all just it's all just time it's all just time wasters and people trying to bilk it are um being either either intentionally ignorant or stupid. And I choose to invoke Hanlon's razor on that and call them stupid. Yeah. Especially especially the especially these days when um, so whenever, whenever I hear that, I think about uh, the show Peep Show. I don't know if you've ever seen that. As a British I haven't. Show. Um, okay. I've watched my fair share of British shows, but I haven't watched enough of them. Amazing, but there's a great quote in there about the stupid, and just saying, like, well, the stupid have actually won, because we're not allowed to call them stupid anymore. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, look, if I, I can't, if I can't call them stupid, I'll just use, an, I'll just use another word. Um, and if they get offended by that, then um, take a number and get to the back of the line. <laughs> um, although when you mentioned British shows, I'll pro- I'll probably get some crap for this, but the first thing that came to mind was um, the thick of it. Yeah, not my style, too political, but good show. I will I will admit the sole re- the sole reason I ended up watching that was j- was just to see Peter Capaldi cursing at everybody. <laughs> like I mean yeah yeah there is the political aspect with with that show but it's a I, political show, but it's a yeah political. it very much is but I I saw it I think what I think what I was able to relate to in that was was ha- was having to be the one smart person in a room full of idiots <laughs> um, um but- but then, due to um, wisdom, doesn't that make you the fool? <laughs> um, that is a question. That is a question better left unsaid. Because a wise man knows he's a fool, but the fool knows he's wise. Is that how that goes? Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, it sounds it sounds like a runabout way to to bring up the Dunning Kruger effect. Oh yes, don't even get me started on that. 
Um, well, well, I can't, I can't use the Peter principle in this case, so that, so that's where, that's where we'd have to go. Plus some. I, I've always looked at it as the be, the, the best way to learn a, the best way to learn a craft is to learn its tenets, its pitfalls, and to learn from people who fall in the pits. Mm-hmm. So when, whenever. Whenever a um, lar- whenever a large company screws so- screws something up, it's like, well, I know what not to do. <laughs> well, that's important, but uh, you know, maybe he kind of uh, like recalls that anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh. Finally, marching on in order to do the same stuff that we've done over and over again. Isn't that isn't that also known as be, as being a fan of being a fan of a bad sports team? <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's like faith or uh, insanity. No, 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 hope. <laughs> Cleveland would like to have a word with you in their constant misery over the, over the over the last forty years. I'll give them a motivational speech. It would involve <laughs> a bunch of game development uh, references that probably a lot of them would know. And they'd be mm-hmm. just like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with with that sa- with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and br- and br- and um. Coming all coming all the way out here, coming all the way up to the temple to enjoy the insanity that comes here. Right. Thank you for having me. Like uh, I said, I enjoy chatting with you. Mm-hmm. My pl- my pleasure, Keep and going. of course, any t- any time you see fit to return, and odds odds are your pr- odds are you're probably going to be coming back to the temple in due time. Thank you. Um, for the open invitation. Yeah. Was that open invitation? <laughs> yeah, it's it is an open invitation. <laughs> can I get in one of your interviews? I can interview two. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dr- as I always say, drinking ain't mandatory here, but it is encouraged. Cheers, then. Mm-hmm. And of and of course, a sincere thanks to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.